By the way, thanks for the uh, perfect pronunciation. Anyway, we practiced out there, so it's repeating in my head. Oh, man. Yeah, that's cool. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Just just about finished. Uh, <clears throat> it's been uh, it's been a great day so far. Um, I'm gonna introduce my my uh, friend here in, in just a moment. I wanted to take a quick second because I know many of you have been waiting diligently all day to know who at Derent is. So the time has finally come. I'm gonna <laughs> divulge that information to you. Um, my name is Nick Chitani, as, as uh, was mentioned. Um, I work with a wonderful group of people at Adherent. Um, we are a demand side platform, um, and we basically, I'm gonna try to do this with at the least amount of industry buzzwords as possible. It's gonna, gonna be nearly impossible. That's how we speak, you gotta yeah, speak closer. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're privacy forward, and we leverage machine learning to predict consumer behavior as a result of ad exposure. So if uh, in, in our partnership with Alta, we would work either within their CRM or identify new audiences and show them ads for Alta across their connected experience based on the prediction that they'll go into the store or online and make a purchase as a result, where otherwise that would not have happened. That's how we do it for the largest beauty retailer. Um, today we're gonna talk about um, the largest and most popular sports drink brand. Um, and Doug is the uh, Senior Director for Consumer Insights. So how many, how many people think about Consumer Insights or how many marketers in this room, Consumer Insights is of importance to them? Don't lie, it's okay, Good. I won't Good. feel bad. Good, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a long <laughs> half hour, wonderful. Um, well, Doug, why don't you uh, uh, tell us exactly what it is that you do at uh, Gatorade? So hey, I'm uh, Doug Healy, and I also, I apologize in advance if I met some of you before, I forgot my glasses, I can't see, some of you might be like, oh, give him the recognized face, and I'm like, sorry, I can't see, I can barely see Nick, apologies. Um, <clears throat> But no, I, and also thank you to Ulta Beauty, because I gotta say, I am also Ulta, not a Sephora boy. Uh, these, I get my beard oils at Ulta, so uh, at the Mundelein store right there. And also, my LinkedIn is like some of the smartest people I've ever worked with. Uh, Maria Salcedo, Carla Davis, Lisa Liu, uh, three people I've worked with through my career who are just incredible. So thank you to Ulta for having me here. So what I do uh, at Gatorade, so I lead Consumer Insights for our uh, Gatorade performance portfolio, uh, which we'll get into in a minute. Like we, we say it that way just because uh, a few years ago we were Gatorade and we were Gatorade sports drink and um, that was it. But now we've expanded, right? So my role within Consumer Insights and, and one of the things I have a passion about is I think insights is oftentimes seen as let's bring in insights when we want to confirm something, let's bring in insights when we want to test something. And I think a lot of insights people play into that, if I'm going to be honest with you. I think some of the function itself has commoditized itself. And uh, what we passionately believe in is that we are consultative business partners. We're business growers. We are not here to share data. We are here to grow the business. The data is simply a tool that we use to get to where we need to go and we are passionate about selling stuff, moving stuff, getting people to care about our brands and what we do, and we're, we're very passionate about it. And I also love, from an insights perspective, we get like full access across marketing. We, talk, we work with our media teams, our consumer engagement teams, media uh, you know, development of advertising, creative, digital, all sorts of stuff. We get to uh, dip our toes everywhere. It's a big ocean. So you talked a little bit about, at the, at the top of your comments, the brand really uh, beginning to uh, evolve. How has the Gatorade brand evolved in the last five years? So uh, five years, so I started on the Gatorade business five years ago. Uh, I've been with PepsiCo for 12 years now. And five years ago, I started on Gatorade, and, and pretty much we were Gatorade, uh, G, what we call GTQ, which is regular Gatorade, the kind of stuff that you grew up with, orange fruit punch, cool blue, whatever your jam is. And we, ha we also had this Propel business on the side that was growing gangbusters, but like just a smallish business. And, and that was the focus. And we were, we were zero, zeroed in on young athletes. They're our core target. They're our inspiration for everything, for really everything that we do and how we build out our business. 
And in those five years, and sometimes like I, it blows my mind to think about, like last week we just launched gummy supplements. And you can buy them on Gatorade.com, you can buy them on GX app. And it's something that like five years ago would have been inconceivable. Our Gatorade Zero business is huge even in just two years. We also have other uh, sports drink sublines. We now have a protein business. Uh, we purchased Cytosport, which it brought muscle milk into the fold. We also have a plant protein shake. Uh, Propel continues to evolve. We're launching a digital ecosystem. So, you know, right now the GX app, which you can download, is something that isn't just a thing to buy Gatorade, you can measure your sweat and it can give you a recommendation for you know, how you should hydrate and what you should use. And then there's also training programs with Jason Tatum and some of the greatest athletes in the world to help you achieve your goals. And this is something that we've done over five years and it's absolutely bonkers. And it's, it's something I feel wonderful about because I think a lot of it is rooted in insights and insight strategy, understanding our consumer. And it's, uh, it's an exciting ride. That's amazing, especially. By the way, interrupt me when I start going. Like, I, I, I no, 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 no. This, uh, by all means, we're we're here to 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 listen to the expert. Uh, so absolutely, that's really cool. It measure it measures the the like the sweat. Like yeah, the sweat patch. You do a, you put it on and you go work out, and then afterward you take a picture on your phone. And it'll go back and tell you like, you know, because different people have different patterns. Some people are heavy sweaters. Some people are light sweaters. So you might need a higher level, higher concentration of electrolytes. You might need. Uh, a solution that's lower sugar um, because you need to consume, as if you're a heavy sweater, you need to consume more, so you need a lower sugar solution in order to make up for everything that's going through without adding all the sugar. So there's a ton of science behind it, it's great. Does it, does it have to be workout sweat? What if somebody woke up, say, a little hungover? App don't know, app don't know. Look, we're not gonna advertise it, but the app don't know. I will, I, will say, judge. I will say, if you, you if you sweat it. enough to fill up the patch after a night of drinking, there's some other people we should talk to. <laughs> and I know them because I've been there. I'm just saying. Yeah. I know those people. Well, we all work in advertising. Yeah. But, uh, they're in this room. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, you know, I had mentioned uh, machine learning as, as a buzzword earlier, but, you know, many brands um, are kind of tapping into that to begin to allow the machine to give the brand, um, you know, feedback on on uh, insights and new audiences. Um, with with your role at Gatorade, are you doing anything like that? Are you leveraging any type of, um, you know, evolved technology to look at the data and, 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 and make, you know, something out of it? No, we aren't yet. We, it, it, and it's wild that we that we aren't because it's exactly what we're doing with our business. You know what I mean? Like, like, like we started with X and then we learned the ways that we can expand and new ways that we can connect with new consumers. And it's such like, you know, you and I were, were talking briefly about this earlier this week. And to me, like, it, it, it's such an incredible platform for understanding quantitatively what really influences your consumer and things you can do fast at, at different levels of scale. And so it's something I feel like we're doing on the macro. That doesn't make any sense. On the macro, what we're talking about is personalization and customization and getting there. But what we aren't doing yet is something as sophisticated as what you're talking about, which is really digging into like updating live and really feeding, like using our creative as a testing platform while it's out there. Got it, got it. Um, so now this is uh, really your time to, to take as much time as needed to, uh, to talk about what you know the most. Um, for the marketers in this room, what, what do we need to be thinking about or have top of mind from a consumer insights perspective as we look towards, you know, the near future, the next few years? You know, I think um, and this is where I'll, I'll kind of get into the frustration of the consumer insights industry. I don't know how many, how closely some of you work with your insights partners. I feel like the insights industry has turned into like how, how quickly can we do concept testing or how quickly can we do that? I think where Insights is really going is fast, and it is using data to iterate and move quickly. I think the, from a people perspective, what I think in the industry we need to continue to grow is kind of what I, what, I, what I led about at the beginning was consultative, ag aggressive is maybe not the right word, but what the hell, we'll say it. Like, like be vocal, be out there, be a leader, make recommendations. But technology-wise, 
the speed is allowing us to do things and to answer questions that, frankly, we couldn't answer before. You could answer it, but it would take 12 weeks and who gives a shit anymore? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so now it's like, all right, we can do it on the fly. And so we're spending money to do this work, but we're actually saving money because we're creating things more effective, more efficient, that, that, that move more quickly to, and like I said, we, five years ago, we were really driving toward, we need to be appealing toward young teen athletes and being powered, like, and they were the driving force for everything that we do. And now, like, we are expanding, you know, a, a zero sugar Gatorade is more designed for an older athlete than it is a younger athlete. And, or an exerciser and we you know we have this new G Fit product which is you know all natural like how do we better learn quickly because we have to learn quickly how to adjust who our targets are who we reach uh, who we're connecting with um, on the marketplace sounds like it's uh, very integral when it comes to a lot of new product launches um, which is great by the way I love the G Fit product um, myself, uh, although it doesn't look like I, I work out, I am somewhat fit. Um, and how does uh, Consumer Insights help you determine, um, you know, how to uh, continue to evolve your media strategy, how, how you reach consumers, your targeting, so on and so forth? Yeah, because I think so much where Consumer Insights can help is if I'm going to be very um, I'm gonna be very transparent. I have a transparency problem. I probably shouldn't. There's a camera pointing at me. There's a bunch of people in the room. But whatever. Let's all let's all let's be us. But there's uh, I I think a lot of creative people. I think people love doing focus groups. People love qualitative. Like let me go talk to consumers. Let me go figure this out. And it's can be. And I just came from focus groups. So I'm not tearing focus groups down. That's why I hadn't been here all day. But it can be the worst way to understand like certain things, right? It's, it's not a great place to, to get answer, like to get a yes, no answer. It, it's, it's a great place to, uh, to understand why. It's a great place to move. I totally lost the place of where I was going. I, I have to admit this right now. Where are we starting? Yeah, we, we're, we're talking about how Consumer Insights uh, helps you uh, decide, uh, you know, Planning media. And Planning media. Thank you very much. This is where we can help because I because I know like within media because media is a separate part of the organization, right? We have ROIs, we have ROI engines, we have marketing mix models, we have everything that goes into that. But where I think interesting consumer insights blends in is the why, and the why isn't just and, and that's where I, that's where I was going with the focus group saying is oftentimes I think it's like oh we're we're trying to understand why this digital platform isn't working or why this isn't working. And we immediately can jump to like, let's go talk to our consumers. But I think there's a ton of foundational work that can be done on a quantitative measure as well. There's a lot of methods. I People call me old school, and it's not just because my white beard. But like, legitimately, there there is value in survey data. Just don't ask stupid questions. There is value in asking lots of people and having big sample sizes. It's just don't waste your money. There, there's great ways of doing things. And what I, I think we can really value add is earlier in the process, let's talk about the foundations. Let's talk about why we're doing the things we're doing. Let's talk about consumer behavior. You know, a lot of uh, behavioral economics is being brought into consumer insights in a way that I think can help people understand, again, the why is behind what's going on in this digital marketplace. Why are some things working and some things not? Like, we can get some answers. And if you understand the whys, those are things we can we can carry through on and on, right? It's an interesting point. Can I take that a step further and ask you to give me an example of like what not to ask, what like, what a stupid question is that might not lead to oh my versus, gosh. versus what, what we should be asking. Yeah. What <laughs> I, no, I, 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 no, I know, I know. But the basic idea is never ask somebody uh, the the question you want to know the answer to, and then this is where you have you have to get because whenever you ask someone something, they immediately are like, why is someone asking me this question? So it's like, if I want to know why someone stopped using Gatorade, I cannot ask them why they stopped using Gatorade. Because they will give me an answer that they've justified in their own head about this, well, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. So what you have to do is, you have to ask a bunch of questions that have nothing to do with anything, or nothing to do, at least in their mind, 
And then you also talk to them about like, well, how about your usage of Gatorade? Has it increased? Has it decreased? Has it done all this? And they answer all these things. And then before you know it, you have these huge sample sizes that we can do correlations and be like, guess what? The people who said that they've been working out less are the people who said that they're decreasing use of Gatorade. Now they didn't, because they wouldn't tell us that their decrease of use of Gatorade has come from the fact that they're working out less. What they would say is, well, there's too much sugar in there, I'm getting healthier. And those, I'm not saying any of those things are untrue per se, but you really want to know, what are the drivers that keep people from using my product? Again, we're all terror, and this isn't like a consumer seat, this is all of us. We are all justifiers. We are all, like our brains just work this way. And if you truly want to understand uh, consumer behavior, you have to know how to, you know, work the side door on, a, on human brains. And, that's what you got to do. Let me know. I'd be glad to help. It's fun. No, we, we have a whole study, I'll say, where we map out over the course of a lifetime people's, the behaviors that lead to people entering and leaving the category. And, and we can map it out. We can size it. We can say, this is the most valuable time for people to come in. These are the things that drive them in. And we know in their mid-20s, here are the things that hit that get them to move away from the business. And that's the kind of thing that can't happen from like a bunch of qualitative work. That's the kind of stuff that can only happen with big samples, some analytics. You use some qual to bring it to life, it's a ton of fun. I love it, sorry, I'm nerd now. No, I mean, that's what that's what we're here for. And is, is that approach, do you think, transferable to other industries outside of CPG, perhaps like retail and beauty? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, he heck yes. <laughs> heck yes, absolutely, Nick. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's all about designing, um, because again, it, it's, it's any, it's anything like human being like human beings aren't that different from each other and i know we talk cohorts and we talk groups and we talk this and we talk that like you know and so whether it's this category or that category it's just about adjusting how you ask questions but more importantly it's like i said it's like the philosophy that goes into how you think about these problems to solve is even if you just start with the understanding of like look if i want to know x i cannot ask them x Great. Now, no matter what category you're in, you can start applying that. Like, even if you th like think about booze. Like, booze is a big one where like a lot of people use it. All of us lie to our doctors about it. Like, how much we use? Oh yeah, no one. Uh, at most two a night. Never. Like, and, and I got drunk before I got here. <laughs> but it's uh, but it's one of those things where it's like even if you, we'll joke about it afterwards. But then there are ways to truly understand like this kind of behavior. And you just have to, you have to be unsuspecting to people, which, which again is I think one of the, the great things about insights, if you bring insights in earlier in the process, because I think we get to the point or some marketing, and I'm not accusing anybody, but like I've worked with teams like this where insights, hey, we have this idea and we want to qualify it. Like then you're in this mindset of, I want to know if this works and I want to go get it. And it's really hard not to ask the question at that point. And, but if you're way in the upfront and you're in the foundation and you're, you're, you're building the frame, you're like, okay, we can ask bigger, broader questions and just kind of understand fluid behavior. And so the earlier you bring insights in, in the process, the more foundational the work can be. And, you know, ironically kind of, it actually makes that end point a lot better, right? Because you kind of know the, the on-ramps and off-ramps, and so you can design to it. So this part at the end, the validation phase that Insights is usually a part of, is actually something you don't even need to do, because you kind of just started from the right place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this morning, my, my colleague Dustin, sitting back there, sent me an article. Uh, looks like uh, PepsiCo had uh, an amazing uh, Q3. It was, it was fun. It was Congratulations good. on that. Can you uh, give us a little bit of... Uh, a uh, sneak peek into what's uh, in it for the f what, what's the future of Gatorade look like? Future, I mean, it's happening now. It's like yeah. I said, like a couple weeks ago, we launched our, our supplements business, and that's that's the start, right? We didn't launch that on our G on our Gatorade.com on our GX platform to be this random thing that we launch on a platform. Like it's the start of growing our business to serve athletes, to serve a broader set of athletes. Five years ago, we were teens who played sports, and now we're redefining who the Gatorade athlete is on a much wider scale of people who are putting in the work, people are putting in the effort, and there's, there's a bigger definition there, and there's a lot more need, and so we're going to continue expansion, real, like, 
heavy push. Like Gatorade, we will always be Gatorade. We'll always be associated with sport. We'll always be the brand that was created on the football field, created by scientists for athletes. We will push that boundary, but we'll, we will be broader. And then we're gonna find new ways to, to expand our audience and our reach of people. It's, it's a really cool approach because uh, it's, it's creating the need. It's not so much, hey, we know people are gonna be working out and we are going to market sports drink to them. It's let's get people to become more active uh, through different types of uh, Gatorade messaging platforms and things like that. And as a direct result, or as a consequence, we'll sell more, more product. Yeah, and, and I mean, and it even, it pushes into our purpose platforms mm -hmm. where, you know, we, we actually had a big conversation about this today about, you know, we've always been big about talking the talk. And so we have a huge commitment to supporting underserved communities, helping them get uh, the, the tools, the things they need, access to sport, access to activity. Obviously not just because, like we're all human beings, right? Like we, we need to sell more stuff because here we are and we want to make money, but like we also want to help people, we want to feel good and like the impact on the community. So like, like I said, everything we do is, is rooted in active and, and we stay true to the brand of what it is. And I think that's one of the things that is also interesting about this is because one of the reasons we didn't expand five years ago is people are like, ah, that's, it's too much, it's too far, how far can Gatorade go? And the thing is our brand can go pretty far. Yeah. But man, you cross that line yeah. and, and that's it. And you, you can't come back. And so how do we stay true to that, that purpose and the passion and that love of what we are uh, while still growing the business as much as we can? That's awesome. I'm gonna go to questions from the audience. I'm sure there's a few. Yes, sir. Um, I have a friend who's a scientist at PSSI, so I've heard about... What's his name? Air Freeze. Yeah, great. Uh, um, <laughs> anyway, I, he, he, you know, talk about okay, it. all right, all right. <laughs> so you're going to give me the juice after. <laughs> Fratern <laughs> fraternity bro juice, I, I need it. <laughs> um, but he didn't get a post on LinkedIn about GMC, and uh, yeah, that's what he impressed me very much. Um, where is your team you know, plugged in throughout that entire process? I think it's long time in development so yeah what's what's your where you involved? like the gx platform yeah. and things like that so we've been connected from the very beginning it, it's an interesting point of view because i will say this isn't the space where you go and do like basis testing concept testing on digital apps and things like that right so it's actually super exciting so i'm i'm really close to the teams that are doing all that so we're doing all sorts of kind of insights both to understand how well the platform's working, what are gonna be the most appealing products. But one of the fascinating things I found is that the digital space actually has a lot less custom research capabilities than, than I would have thought. You know what I mean? It's the most like data heavy space, but there is just a lot of like, a lot of user testing that that isn't quantitative, et cetera. So anyway, so we've been partnering with a lot of that to really understand, um, you know, how we can help the team grow, what are the right products to launch, how we can expand, what the packaging should look like, how it can be different from what we launch in store, but also, you know, still strongly connected to our business. Uh, so it's been fun, it, it's, it's wild, it's wild. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, I was talking with someone about this earlier today, like there's, <clears throat> there's so much, like there's a bunch of trends companies that come up with a bunch of things and they all move really fast, are they really trends? If they move that fast or they think like, but we also wanna be on top, right? You don't wanna be the one that's caught like, like oh, we're just gonna wait till everything gets big and then catch up. Long story short, we're not, we're not great at it. With regards to like insights itself, one of the things I do think helps us is that we're PepsiCo, we're Gatorade, we're a really big business. And so we can kind of wait until things get pretty big, right? Or, or at least like you can, you can see that threshold coming because we don't need to be on the cutting edge of like writing it at the very beginning until it happens. And so 
we are kind of fortunate enough to be able, so like we have a ton of data out there kind of seeing what's growing, what's growing. Okay, this has hit like a certain point. We can really get into it. But then I think like everybody else too, we also make a lot of bets, right? And it's like before it hits that point, no, we just feel really good. We have a lot of experience. This feels like something that'll, that'll work really well. And um, we're not always right. Um, in terms of innovation, I mean, I, in my experience, for those who didn't hear, uh, the question was around like innovation development, like a framework of kind of starting with jobs to be done versus starting with like ideas, right? And then kind of finding jobs to be done. Uh, in a perfect world, I would argue jobs to be done is always the way to go. And you like, because if you're not solving a problem, who gives a shit, right? And that problem doesn't have to be like some new to the market, pr sometimes. The, the solution is putting a Gatorade brand on a product because it has a trust level that other brands don't, yada, yada, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, and it, I feel like 10 years ago, it was much more the second way. It was like, ah, oh, we're gonna test 50 ideas and the ones that float to the top, we're gonna work on and we're gonna develop the concept. And, and I feel like we're much more focused now on jobs to be done. That said, there are also always well, we've invested a lot of money in developing this. We got to find a way to make it work. There's al there's always projects that come through the system of like somebody's kind of idea, and and we try the best to make it work. But jobs to be done, consumer problems to solve, in my mind, always the best place to start. Um, you had mentioned that you guys have charted like the entire lifespan of your consumer and when they're entering and exiting with uh, with the Gatorade product portfolio. What is like a couple interesting market times for people to enter that maybe were surprising to you in doing that work? Yeah, uh, I think a big one, well, one thing I'll say is, and this was true because I did this for Gatorade. I also did this when I was on the Quaker team. And one of the things we found very, and maybe this isn't a surprise to anybody, but, um, 18 to 19, like going into college is a huge transformational period for everybody. And it's like oatmeal usage really struggled because people who ate breakfast the same way every day, et cetera, et cetera. And then sports drinks, I think people were very surprised to see a similar sort of thing because you know, you're still active in your late teens, early 20s, but it falls off so much. When it's not scheduled like it is in high school, a lot of usage falls off. But what we see when people coming in is mid 20s, late 20s, people getting back into it. Oh crap, I can't just do it this way. And so seeing people come in as they kind of get busier with their lives, as they're most successful in their careers, as they start to have families and kids, we are actually seeing people come in, not exit out. Sorry, I think we, we need to move on on timing, right? Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, I orchestra's trying. playing us out. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank yeah. you for- no, That was uh, great, for, thank you all. For uh, all that feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.